So, today we're going to continue our discussion on square roots. And we're going to do a little review. Now, we've worked with these for some time, and we've got to remember that square roots simply are a path for doing the inverse operation of exponents. 3 squared equals 9. We all know 3 times 3 is 9. We're pretty accustomed to this. But we have to realize the square root's purpose is to take us backwards here. So if 3 squared is 9, the square root of 9 is 3. Likewise, when the power is not 2, we can say 2 cubed is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. You notice how all the numbers match up. And these are inverse operations of each other. There is an understood 2 on a square root, meaning what times what makes 9. 3 times 3 makes 9. Down here it's what times what times what makes 8. Again, square roots, something we're accustomed to. Now, that leads us to our first rule. A square root squared has to be the number. And that's a little hard to understand until we start doing some examples. The square root of 3 times the, times the square root of 9 has to make 9. That's because the square root of 9 is 3, that's a factor, times this factor is also 3. And we all know 3 times 3 is 9. But it doesn't have to be what we call a perfect square. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is a whole number 2. The square root of 1.3 times the square root of 1.3 is the whole number 1.3. And it can be any binomial, anything that's exactly matched, as long as it's a term. The square root of the binomial x minus 1 times the square root of x minus 1. Same binomial is x minus 1. And this is our first property of square roots. Likewise, we can remind ourselves that we can grab a calculator, and you can do this here and grab your calculator, and find out if you type in the square root of 18 in your calculator, it's approximately 4.2. 2, 4, dot, 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 dot. And that should make sense to us when we think about our perfect squares and our perfect square roots. And I made a table here in black, the perfect squares. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. And doing the inverse, we can say, hey, the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4, the perfect square is 2. Well, 18, I think, sits between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25, between the consecutive integers 4 and 5. So we would completely expect the square root of 18 to land in there. So where are some other square roots that aren't perfect squares, and where do they land? Where would the square root of 10 land between consecutive integers? Well, we can look down here. We know that 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16, or we can think of the perfect square roots. Square root of 9 is 3, square root of 16 is 4. We all have to agree that 10 lies between here. So I might not know exactly what this is, but I can write it's between the two consecutive integers, 3 and 4. And again, that should make sense to us through our definitions. These are irrational numbers. The square root of 18 and the square root of 10 can never be written as a fraction. The square root of 9 can, because the square root of 9 is a whole number 3, which we recognize as a fraction, but radicals cannot. So again, a couple of radicals on the board. Again, moving forward, if we have the cube root of x, we have to recognize that cubed has to be the whole number. Again, when the index and the exponent match, you're going to get the whole. 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8. And likewise, the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, but these two are equal. You don't write 2 three times. The cube root of 64 is 4. I always tell students it helps to know 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for the cubes, and it doesn't hurt to have them kind of in the back of your mind for the fourth power. And again, when the index and the exponent match, you're going to get the whole. So if I told you the tenth root, and you wanted to make a whole, you'd take it to the tenth power. And that would make the whole. All right. So I'm going to go back to square root of 18. It's 4.2426406687. If you pause the video and we start checking the factors of 18 as square roots, the square root of 3 times the square root of 6, and make sure you type in your calculator right. 
A lot of calculators are going to have brackets, and you have to put in this parenthesis if you're going to make your calculator do it the right operation. You miss this, you do not get the correct answer. But if you type that in your calculator, you're going to find out you get exactly 4.24264687. I'm going to just use a pair of tick marks. And if I break the 6 into 3 and 2, and I take the square root of 3 times the square root of through 3 times the square root of 2 on my calculator, I'm going to get exactly the same number. all the way to the last decimal place. Well, square root of 3, square root of 3, we just talked about this. This makes the whole number 3. So what about 3 times square root of 2? Well, that on your calculator is exactly the same number. And we know if we go from 18, we could have done the factors 9 and 2. Well, that results in the same number. And we already know the square root of 9 is 3, so these two factors on your calculator make the same number. And we just found the product of square roots. It's a rule we're going to talk about next. But I always come back to the old why care. You know, why in math would we want to keep radicals? Why would we just not write a decimal? And I'll tell you about my experience in engineering. I think this is a good way to look at it. I can round this. I can round this to 4.2, right? Square root of 18 equals 4.2. Well, think about it. That means we're throwing away all of this. And steel is 90. KSI strong in ultimate strength, 90,000 pounds per square inch. Well, 90,000 pounds, that's like 45 cars per square inch. All right, so if it's 90,000 pounds and we're throwing this away, and you threw away the 0426, 406, and say you had 90,000 pounds per square inch. Well, think about it. There's four zeros. I can get rid of these four zeros and move this decimal place Four places. One, two, three, four. Four at 26 times nine. Let's just round down. Call it 400. 400 times nine, that's 3,600 pounds per square inch. So just by rounding to the tenth spot, we threw away, I don't know, two or three cars per square inch. So again, when we get to these large numbers and strength and stuff, sometimes we can't afford to round. So we have to be well versed in hand and radicals. And it's really a product of this simple rule. Last slide today. If I have the square root of a number, which I can write as factors m and n, I can break them into separate radicals multiplied by each other. So let's see this in action. Let's think of the square root of 50. We're going to do it two ways. I can think of it as 25 and 2. And this is always the easiest way. Think of the perfect square on that other chart. You know, think of which times which. Because what is the square root of 25? It is the whole number 5. And if you type these in your calculator, you'll get the same decimal. But what if you didn't think of that? What if you thought of, oh, wait a minute, I thought of 5 times the square root of 10, Mr. Anderson. Well, that's fine. It just means you're going to have to do a little more work. And then break the 10 down into 2 and 5. Again, check it as you go on your calculator. It works. I'll flip these two because I can multiply in any order, and I know two radicals with indexes of two, square root of five, square root of five, make the whole number five. Same answer. And it has to be the same answer. It does help if we use the perfect squares, and I'll try to do that from here out. But I, I tell you what, I'm 32. Very few students initially see 16 and 2. I do, I'm, but I'm very used to doing math. So I'll start with 4 and 8. That's what students usually see, and 4 being the perfect square. Well, that is the whole number 2. But 8 can be broken down again. So I have 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And we got to be careful right here. Here's the mistake I see. This is not 22. Because there's no symbol here, we know it's multiplication. And I get to 4 square roots of 2. And again, the easiest way a lot of times, if you see it, great. Square root of 16 times square root of 2 is still 2 and 16 make 32. And the square root of 16 is the whole number 4. All right, 108. And again, I see the perfect square that goes into this, but let's work through it. I see it's divisible by 3. So I'll take the 3 out first, because 1 plus 0 plus 8 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 108 is divisible by 3. And I get... 36. And I know 36 is the whole number 6, 
and I know I can write that in any order. And we always write integers before radicals, so it's 6 square root of 3. Again, this takes some practice. Remember, our rule, our product rule of radicals is right there. And we can reduce these as we go.